You've also expressed concern about we're in an election year about the rhetoric in this political campaign. Um, this is a hardly charged election year, as I said. Now, we have a separation of church and state in this country in the Constitution. So how do you see the role of the church in public policy in an election year? I think the role of the church is to help people form their consciences, to help people to see how do I form my conscience? What are the principles that I should be using when I go into the voting booth? Obviously, you know, we stay out of the, the, the politics, you know, who, for whom to vote, but to give the principles that should be kept in mind. And, and those principles include, like, you know, decent human discourse, you know, treating people with respect and dignity. Uh, sadly, uh, politics has, um, has become very fractional in our country, as you know. Um, there's kind of a take no prisoners attitude. It's my way or the highway. We've lost the art of diplomacy. We've lost the art of, of, of just talking civilly to one another and respecting each other's opinions and recognizing that I can disagree with you, your opinion, but I respect you as a person. And at the end of the day, after the debate, we can still go and have dinner together and be friends. I don't get that picture this election cycle. It's very harsh and vitriolic and sophomoric in my view. But, you know, <laughs> We're growing, and hopefully as time goes on, things will get better. You know, in the mid-1980s, the Conference of Catholic Bishops released very strong statements about nuclear weapons and about economic justice. Some people criticized them, felt they were overstepping their roles, their expertise. But what do you think in terms of the context for where we are now, some 25 years later? Well, to me, that's the beauty of our system, our demo democratic system, is that the church, like other institutions, like other individuals, has a right to speak in the public square. So when the bishops back in the 80s spoke, I think prophetically, about nuclear arms and the economy, they were exercising that right that we have in our country to speak in the public square. And then people listen and make up their mind and go into the voting booth. I think there's a mistake that people say, well, the church should stay in the sacristy. The church should stay in the church and stay out of the public square. That's not our country. We, we, we have religious freedom in this country. And so it's important that people see we can speak our truth. And then, of course, we can't mandate. People have to make up their own mind. So I do not think in any way that the church is overstepping her bounds and speaking onto these issues. And some will disagree and we can have a debate. I happen to think that we were right. <laughs> but it's, you know, the point is, is that we not only have a right, but we have a responsibility. We've been given, you know, the, through revelation, uh, through the scriptures and our sacred tradition, we have, we believe, a truth to speak. And we want to speak that truth. And hopefully people will see it as true and will, will, will agree with it. But in any case, we have the right and the responsibility to speak it. And again, it has to do with human life. Uh, we need to move forward in the elimination of nuclear arms in our world. And we need to avoid these economic systems that in themselves are enslaving people. We become, uh, Pope Francis uses the term, a culture of indifference. We become indifferent to the poor. And that's wrong. You know, ours, we have to look at how are our systems enslaving people? How are they working? Uh, you know, it, the economy is supposed to lift up humanity, but in many cases we see the economy is suppressing humanity and enslaving human beings.